Mark. Thanks, Mark. It's uh, Connected Life. Bradley Shen is with us. Good morning. Connected as always. Yes. Sometimes I want to just be disconnected. I was thinking about that <laughs> yesterday. What, the, what would that be like? I don't oh, no. know. Is that how you go on vacation? You just uh, throw everything in the, in the drawer and head out? Well, yeah. Well, my wife's sitting there, phone down, phone down, because I'm often plugged into screen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, you're plugged in right now because that's why we have you. Here. That's why. <laughs> that's, right. that's what I do. So what's, we're talking up? About what's up? Yeah, what's, what's up? up? What's well, up? There, this has been covered a bit. Uh, Nineteen billion dollars for an acquisition yeah. of a mobile messaging company by Facebook. So, what's really going on there? When you look at all the data out there. Now WhatsApp has been a very popular and free right. text messaging application. It's With got... It's a dollar, isn't it, on the App Store? Well, it, it started out as free when they okay. got to almost 100 million users. Oh, okay. And then they nothing. said, we should start charging for this. Yeah, and let's... and A freemium model, as, as everybody says, but they're at like almost a half billion users. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, that's also very much China and India. So around the world, people's mobile phones have been loaded with this app, so Facebook acquires that mm. user base and also acquires all that data around messaging and a good footprint into mobile. So now Facebook has even more sort of relevant data about what we're talking about and what we're doing, which is very powerful from an advertising perspective, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. So when you put things in context of what we're looking for, what we want to buy, what we're talking about, what we're shopping, what types of conversations we're having with our friends, it becomes really, really powerful as far as what we refer to as the social graph, mm -hmm. right? Um, another topic that's kind of uh, taking off right now is when I was uh, talking about CS, we were talking about smart everything. Right. Smart toothbrushes, mm -hmm. smart slow cookers, do we really need that? Right. But here's an interesting trend that could really save lives and is so needed, particularly uh, in the United States, is smart guns. So RFID technology and biometrics, in this case a watch that accompanies, in other cases, fingerprint rep recognition, grip recognition in certain cases, guns that will only fire for the specific owner and user and not by a child that perhaps stumbled upon the gun mm -hmm. and not by somebody who stole the gun. Over a quarter million dollar guns are stolen in the U.S. Mm -hmm. annually. So That's interesting. So this could really save lives. Of course, there's some opponents to it say, saying that you know, a gun should just fire. And, and there yeah, shouldn't be any course, there will provisions be, yeah. and me mechanisms, but I think having uh, technology and science and, and perhaps even computers mm -hmm. as a safeguard is an interesting thing. Now, can... Would it be an automatic unlock, like say you're a police oh, yeah. officer or something? That, that's been one of the challenges, is it does the gun know it's time to fire? And of right. course, people that are worried about that are like, are hesitant to count on any kind of other safeguard or technology, you know, right. the, the right. fear is, mm. I don't want my gun to have to reboot, right? Well, especially if you're a police officer in a life-threatening situation. So sure. these technologies that are putting in this place are, are you know, locks are 100% solid and, sorry the pun, bulletproof, mm. right? Okay, okay. all right. Um, but speaking of technology and artificial intelligence, Ray Kurzweil, a great luminary uh, of our time, responsible for all sorts of um, great research and data, uh, including voice recognition as we generally know it now. Um, he's been a prognosticator of many, many sort of predictions, and a lot of them have come true. And one of them he talks about is called The Singularity. So you know that movie that came out, Her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's actually saying that we will, without a doubt, and again, he's been right about a lot of things, have this technology by 2029. Like, he's calling it. He's saying you will have Her this artificial intelligence, this human-like sentient being by 2029. He specifically referred to the movie because there were many little cute uh, predictions in there. Mm -hmm. But it still is kind That's of a sad a bit story. Creepy. It's a sad, almost creepy story about the fact that yeah. this person can't meet a real human being. Right. Right? And maybe it's a blend of artificial intelligence becoming an augmentation to our experience, but it is definitely around the corner. Um, Last but not least, if you like these lofty ideas and the, perhaps these even uh, these questionable technologies or things that we grapple with um, that may change us, mm -hmm. there's a really cool conference coming up in the friendly shadow of the TED conference, okay. and it's called Bill. Mm -hmm. So TED, as you Ted may know, Bill's, Bill and Ted's Bill excellent and Ted. adventures. Right. Yeah, as you may know, um, TED is rather exclusive. It's uh, about eight thousand dollars to go to the TED proper mm -hmm. for the the TED Global Conference, and yeah. you must be invited and whatnot. So this has been going on since two thousand eight in California, just down the road from TED. And this is like the free one or the it's cheaper one? It's completely free and open and accessible and participant driven as well. 
and many of the TED speakers kind of sneak over and do the bill oh, really? right after the oh, TED. Okay. Really? You don't got to spend eight grand. So is there a bill, the bill is coming here to Vancouver bill as is well? Bill is coming to Vancouver. I'm even helping out. We're getting lots of people involved. It's the 22nd and 23rd of March. And when is TED? And TED is just before that. Just oh, slightly okay. before that and there's a, a miniature overlap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So there check out go. Bill if you like TED. Look at you, you rebel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like helping. Rubble. It's one of those efforts like Stone Soup where everybody pitches in. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Thank you it. very much. Yeah. Thanks, Bradley. All right, let's get to Caitlin. Thank